I decided that I am going to paint this. I got a uke for Christmas because I have been plucking Dakotas a bunch. The thing is, Dakotas was such a good deal. It was like 60 something dollars for this, the case, the strap, the extra strings, and the, the whatever the hell you call those little picky things, a pick, and the tuner. And that was all like 60 something dollars. So my parents were like, wow. Can you send us the link for that? And of course, they bought me the exact same one. I do want to quickly emphasize that it's a very nice ukulele, and I'm very, very happy with it, but I just wanted to be able to tell them apart easily. There are actually a few differences. This is hers, this is mine. Hers is heavier. We found that the reason for this is because the base of the neck here of hers is taller than mine. Which is good because that's one way to tell ours apart while they're pretty much the same uke. I had the brilliant idea of painting it. We got some handy dandy tools from Walmart. We have a brush set, two things of blue paint, a coral paint and a cream paint, and a gloss varnish. So first I'd like to share my plans. I'd like to paint the body this. I want to leave these little cream outlines. My plan was to use this coral color on this little circle-y thing here. And then, these little thingamajigs, you know, those, I was going to make this cream color. However, I think I might make it opposite. I don't know. I will think about it. So I unpackaged the paint brushes and the paint and I started working and the paint actually went way longer than I thought it would so I really didn't even need to break into the second tube. It was pretty easy. I started by painting the front and just kind of going around the detailed parts. Paint was pretty smooth. The brushes were really simple and just like from Walmart but they did the job just fine. I started getting into the details a little bit I just took it slow this is way sped up but you know if you take it slow and you're really careful around the strings then you really don't even need to de-string it and if you get any of the paint on the strings then it was pretty simple for me to just take it off with my fingers you just have to be gentle and if it dries then just gently use your nail I don't know if that damages it at all, but for me it wasn't really a problem. It didn't really seem to damage the strings whatsoever. So around the edges, I covered the little black lines, I guess, that were surrounding it because I just wanted the cream color to show through. And once I painted over that, it looked fine. And for the crisp lines around the middle part, that was easy too. For the sides, if I messed up, it was easy to just run my finger over it. You'll see me doing it quite a bit here. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. So if you just run your finger over it, then it really takes care of it. And if it dries, then you can just scrape it off real easy. So I found that right after I painted the back blue, I wanted to do an accent color on the back. So I decided to go with my coral color since it would kind of give it a little bit of pizzazz. So I went with that. It covered the original blue paint just fine because I rubbed it off enough. And when I did the neck, I just had to be careful about the front of the neck. But luckily it was also easy to rub any 
paint that I accidentally got on there off and that was a blessing because that would have been awful if it wasn't um, but yeah I was just careful about it made sure that whenever I laid it down it was dry the top part was a little hard having to go around all the pegs but eventually I switched to a smaller paintbrush I'm not sure if I filmed that part or not and if I made a mistake it was easy to wipe off because it's just metal So at this part, I decided to go with the coral, and as I was painting, I realized that I really liked the wood grain for the little squiggly guys. If you see like the black parts on it, how it's like etched in, it just it didn't look natural with color in it. It looked kind of bad, so that's also a reason. So for the signature on the top, I ended up changing it to white from coral because it was toned down and I liked it and I just painted over the squiggly. I patched up my little mistakes and I varnished it. So after all the varnish and the drying and whatnot, here is the finished product. I absolutely love it. So here's the, the accent back. Up close. It has a lot of texture to it. It kind of like reminds me of like stucco almost. <laughs> the front and the back are the most um, bumpy I guess and I think the reason for that is because it was such a big flat surface that it gave me the idea that I could just like go ham on it and I ended up putting too many layers. There's a couple very small spots that I missed with the varnish that I'll probably have to go in for later but other than that I'm pretty happy with it back front he's so cute and his name is Gary I don't know why I named him Gary it was just I thought I'm gonna name my uke and then the only like thing that could come to mind was Gary thinking about it now like in retrospect it's kind of like kind of cute because you know all like the ukulele songs and spongebob and like gary's his little snail <laughs> so you know i guess it could be like a tribute to like steven hillenberg or something so here's my guy my little gary i gotta tune him but i figured what i could do was do a little song on him so i guess there's no comparison but you'll be able to hear what he sounds like now that he's been painted Contagious, <clears throat> and it's contagious, and it's contagious. 
gorgeous and it's contagious. So that was a funny little tribute to my uke and my cat because I didn't film an outro but this would be the time where you would like and subscribe, and I really appreciate it. This wasn't a really fancy or nice or fun video, but I appreciate you guys watching and hanging out with me.